hello everyone welcome back once again to my channel thank you so much for watching my videos it's always nice when people watch um, so yeah thanks for being here I've gone for a hat today which anyone who knows me will know that I am NOT a hat person I never wear hats ever 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 but my hair's getting quite long as you can see really quite long and some days it feels a bit stupid putting product in it because I'm not going anywhere, I'm not seeing anyone. So putting product in it, just a waste of product. And you know what it's like when your hair's long, if you put like, so I use like a, almost like a putty type thing normally on my hair. But when your hair's long, it just gets all gunky and weird. So I got myself a cap. It was only a cheap one from like Top Man online. But I don't, I usually wear it backwards and I put it on when I don't want to do my hair. <laughs> um, literally, like if I've got a Zoom call or something, I just pop a hat on now. But I prefer it backwards. I don't think wearing it front ways looks good. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Do I have it this way? Or this way? I d I'm not a fan of this way personally. But that way I think is okay. Because it just keeps the hair out and means you don't have to make your hair look nice. Anyway, that's a, there's a hat update for you. You didn't ask for a hat update, but I give you one anyway. You're watching this video and you've seen the title of the video. And the title of the video is something along the lines of top 10 binge-worthy shows. And I, I will get into that, absolutely. That is what this video is. And uh, if you want to skip to that bit of the video, feel free to do so down below. But it is pretty much lunchtime and I need to make me and Joe some lunch. So I'm going to do um, like maybe come some kind of brunch. We didn't really have much for breakfast this morning. So I'll go for, uh, I'm going to do some like sourdough toast, maybe some tomatoes, uh, perhaps some scrambled egg, bit of avocado, you know, the brunchy sort of vibe. In fact, before I make lunch, we need a candle right here. The one that we had on has uh, burned its last breath that's not the right phrase but it's died anyway so we need a new one i've got my candle basket here we have got we've got loads of them this basket like i say is full we've got tea lights there um matches we use this bad boy to light them um but yeah loads of different flavors ones that one's not got a label on it i don't know what that one is this is a new one that i just got from sainsbury's honey rose and peach smells lovely so maybe i might actually go for that one today um obviously got yankee candles in here because everyone loves a yankee candle that's like a cozy cotton one um this one here is actually one of my favorites honey and tobacco you'd have thought tobacco would be a weird unpleasant scent for a candle but actually amazing and i've got this one i think is tobacco as well yeah there we go, warm tobacco pipe. People were surprised often when I uh, tell people about how much I love scented candles. I'm a 31 year old bearded male and uh, I love them. I love scented candles. Joe's not even that bothered. She'll take them or leave them, but I, I love them to the point where I made a little cubby hole for them in our lounge. So there you go, got my candle ready for this evening. That one will be lit and burning away. Uh, but in the meantime, it's lunchtime. Mostly, where the heck has that gone from? We don't even sit there. That's wet. It's wet. That's just. <gasps> Your tomato, it just squirts. It has to be the tomato. There's nothing else. It's never. It wasn't there earlier. It's wet. Just eating my my um, lunch here that you can see the um, brunch that I made, and uh, I was looking out the wall and I was like, "Where's that stain come from?" 
It's like a blood splatter on the wall. I hope our landlord doesn't think we've murdered someone. Anyway, this is what, what it was. I was like, what is that? It's like a splatter of blood. And then I thought, that wasn't there this morning. I looked and it was my tomato, I think. It, it can only, it mustn't it? It must be. It can only have been, I went to cut my tomato and it's gone there on the wall, blood stain. There you go, a little bit of brunch drama. Now, it's been a long 12 months for all of us, no doubt. And one of our best friends over the last year has been Netflix, has it not? <laughs> We've been using ours a lot. And for good reason, there's not been a lot else to do. We've not really been able to go out. And so there's been a lot of time to watch different shows, get to know different things that are out there, try new programs, pick up some old favorites as well. And thankfully with Netflix, it is all on there. So we've really gotten our money's worth this year with our subscription fees for Netflix. Uh, but these are my top 10. These are the things that probably in 2020 and now into 2021 that me and Joe have been watching and enjoying. And uh, yeah, perhaps you might want to watch them as well. Uh, so here we are, this is my top 10. Now, if I was, I'm not doing these shows in any sort of order, but if I was, Breaking Bad, which is the first one that I want to talk about, would be right at the top of that list. It's an American um, drama, I, th I guess you would call it a drama. Yeah, it's a drama, so it's like a light-hearted, while also being quite dark drama. Um, when it was pitched to me back in the day by a friend of mine, I did think, mm, don't know if that's for me, to be honest, but I tried it. And loved it. It is a brilliantly, brilliantly put together show. It's one of those programs where every episode has got a twist and then you're like, oh, we've got to watch the next one. You just put the next one on. Um, but me and Joe are watching it at the moment. We're literally right at the end of season five. There's five series. Um, I've seen it before. Joe hasn't. So we're working our way through that. It follows a man called Walter White, who is a high school chemistry teacher. Walter White gets diagnosed in the very, very first episode with uh, terminal lung cancer. He, because they don't have an NHS in America, he then realises that he's going to need money to pay for his treatment. And if the worst happens, he wants to be able to leave money for his family. He's got um, a child, a wife and another child on the way. So he thinks, I'm a chemistry teacher. I know chemistry. What could I do to make money? And that is what, that's as much as I'm going to tell you. He does something very unexpected and goes on a real journey throughout the show, um, but a really, really good show. If you're looking for something to get your teeth into and just binge watch, there's only five series, so I think it's about 60 episodes, not too many, but really, really worth your time. Breaking Bad. Another one that has been one of Netflix jewels in the crown, if you like, one of their really popular shows is The Crown. <laughs> Jewel in the Crown, The Crown, see what I did? Um, but The Crown is an amazing programme following the British royal family from uh, King George VI right through to almost right up to modern day now. They're, they're back into the 90s, I think, as far as they've got. But it follows the royal family and in particular uh, Queen Elizabeth II, who is our current queen, our monarch right now, follows her right through her journey from being a young princess with her dad as king right through to having to deal with things like um, the death of Winston Churchill, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Miners' Strike, um, any of the sort of things that have happened in British history, you see how the Queen had to deal with that as monarch. Um, and it is very it's scripted, it's not all real, um, but you, you, you know, you get a bit of a window as to what it must be like to be privy to those conversations that the royal family have that we never see. A really good watch. The Crown is a must. Now, the next one is very difficult to describe to you. Um, it is a drama, it's a British drama called The Stranger. Um, I thought it was on BBC, but actually I've just looked it up and it was uh, a Netflix special, so it's made for Netflix. But the idea of the show is you've got a family man going by the name of Adam Price, he's happily married, and all of a sudden somebody comes up to him and says to him, your wife has been lying to you for years. This didn't happen, this didn't happen, this didn't happen. And it, this lady turns up and just blows open his life and says all these things, she's been lying to you. And so he starts to figure out all these things about his life that he didn't realise that weren't true or that hadn't happened. I won't give away plots or anything like that, but it's a brilliant show, really, really gripping. And I, my parents came to visit us last year, and when they did, we binged the entire show while they were here because they said, oh, we haven't seen it, so we binged it, and it was so good. Really gripping. Ending's not the best, I will give that, but... 
it's one of them shows again that just keeps you guessing all the way through. So if you're looking for something to, you know, grip you, The Stranger. And now for something a little bit different. Me and Joe watched this one a couple weeks back. I wanted to recommend to you the program Lennox Hill. Lennox Hill is a documentary series about a hospital in New York called Lennox Hill. Um, and within that hospital, the show follows, I believe it's four... Um, of the members of staff within the hospital. You've got a nurse, you've got a, sur a couple of surgeons. It's, it's very gripping and you basically get to see what they do day to day within their roles. And particularly looking at the guy who is the uh, brain surgeon, the cameras are actually allowed into the surgeries and you get to see how difficult that role is. And particularly with everything that's going on in the world right now with COVID, to watch something like that was really eye-opening. You know, you get to see the pressure that our health service, no matter where from the United Kingdom or America, is under. You know, these individuals have lives in their hands as part of their daily job. And so watching it was really interesting, very emotional as well, because you get to know the uh, patients as well, because it kind of follows them uh, right through their time in the hospital. If you want to, you know, if you're interested in that sort of medical side, this is a must. This next one was a hit of 2020, The Last Dance. Now, if you're into sports, or even if you're not, The Last Dance, you have to watch it. I'm a football fan. I'm not into basketball, really, whatsoever. But I watched The Last Dance because I'd heard of all the people in it. You know, you've got Michael Jordan, probably one of the biggest sports stars of all time. You've got Scottie Pippen. You've got Dennis Rodman. Uh, you've got all these guys who are part of the Chicago Bulls dynasty of the 90s. You know, that successful team that sort of won everything. And this is a documentary about them, basically. And they've got all the old footage and they've basically put it together in a documentary with interviews with all the key people from today. And it's fascinating. Honestly, I've never seen a better sports documentary ever. And I've seen all the football documentaries out there and some others. But this, it, honestly, it was top end. <laughs> this next one was a bit of a surprise. And you might think, really, Ash, you watched that? But yeah, I did. And I really enjoyed it. Um, and the show that I want to recommend to you next is Emily in Paris. Again, not the sort of thing I would normally watch. Joe stuck it on one day. And I was there and I thought I'd watch it. And it follows a young lady called Emily who's like an ad exec from America. And uh, she breaks up with her boyfriend and she moves to Paris uh, to work at another sort of marketing agency. She's a social media expert. So she goes off to Paris and it's about her kind of working in Paris, living in Paris. Lots of people said it's a bit of a sort of fawny love letter about look how cliched Paris can be. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was nice. I've been to Paris a couple of times and... There's definitely some truth in it, you know, the way that Paris is and it's very romantic and cafes and everybody smokes and all that kind of stuff, you know, like there was a lot of truth in it, but I just loved it. It was very kind of, um, very just, it was nice. It was just nice. It was a nice show. If you're looking for something nice and easy to watch, you know, a bit of romance in there, nice country, Paris is beautiful, nice architecture, Eiffel Tower's there. Emily in Paris. Get on it. You'll enjoy it. The next one is one that you've probably heard of, Modern Family. A really good show about a modern family living in California, three households, all the same family. And it's a, it reminded me a little bit, if you've seen New Girl, um, which would have been on this list, but I already had 10, so I couldn't add it. Um, but it's a bit like New Girl. It follows this family. Like I said, it's three different households. Um, they're all part of the same family, and they all live in a uh, sort of LA, California area. And again, it's it's a comedy show. So it's like, uh, you know, a bit like Friends meets New Girl. There's no laugh track like in Friends. Um, and it's, you know, it's sort of more family-based than New Girl. It's heartwarming in places, but... There's very few shows that me and Joe have watched over the recent years that have made us laugh as much as Modern Family does. All the characters are brilliant. I'm a particular fan of Jay and Gloria. But like I said, think of New Girl Meets Friends and that's kind of what it is. Modern Family. Now the next one is not one that I ever thought I'd recommend to you at all. Like this is the biggest shock on the list, I think, when you watch it, this video, you'll be like, really? Ash, you watched that. I hold my hands up. I liked it. Joe and I, again, binge this in uh, probably a couple of weeks. Selling Sunset. Very trashy. Think um, Keeping Up the Kardashians type vibes. It's reality TV, so it's very real. Uh, well, 
as real as reality TV can be. Um, I expect a lot of it's probably staged and stuff, but uh, basically the premise of it is a group of, I don't know how many, seven or eight girls who work for this estate agents in uh, Beverly Hills, and their job is to sell mansions to millionaires, and that is what they do. It's like, yeah, it's just following an estate agent, basically. But it's not an estate agent like we would know it here in the UK. Very glamorous, you know, they go into work in sort of ballroom gowns and high heels and they have makeup and the hair's perfect and all of this. Like, it's, it's very Kardashian-y. But I, I liked seeing all the expensive houses. That was kind of the, the draw for me. You know, they take you into these million dollar houses and you get to see how the other half live, really. And that was quite interesting, you know, uh, to see all these big mansions. I think the most expensive one they had on there was worth 80 million. I quite liked the trashy side of it. I didn't think a word, but I did. Uh, so if you're looking for something trashy, this is the program for you, Selling Sunset. The next one probably changed my life more than any of the others on the list. And that is Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. First program I ever watched on Netflix, this is. Literally, we got Netflix and I'd heard about this program. And you've seen in this um, flat that we live in here in, um, in Gloucester, I like to keep things very tidy. So when I heard there was a program exclusively dedicated to tidying, I was all over it. That was the first thing we watched. Really enjoy it. Marie Kondo is like a, she's a tidying expert. She literally goes into people's homes where it's messy and it's chaotic and she makes it look tidy. You know, she shows people how to throw things away, how to fold things, how to store things uh, so that it looks neat. You know, all of these different tips and tricks. And I still, I fold now like Marie Kondo does. You know, me and Joe, when we've got too much stuff in a particular area, like too many clothes or whatever, we do her methods to make sure that we declutter properly. It's changed my life. So if you're into your sort of home uh, decor, tidying type videos, get all over tidying up with Marie Kondo. It will change your life. The last one on the list of my top 10. Again, I think I'm gonna have to do another video because there is tons more I could have included. But this is my current top 10, I think, for like during lockdown, things we watched during lockdown. And number 10, the final one on the list, is a bit of an old classic if you're from the UK, but I only just caught up with it and just realized that it was a thing. And that's Dr. Foster. I believe it was on BBC back in the day, BBC One. Dr. Foster is, a, like I said, it's a British drama, stars uh, Saran Jones, I think is the main actress in it. She is brilliant all the way through. Um, and the premise of the show is she is a, uh, a GP, like a doctor, in a small town in the UK, and uh, she suspects one day that her husband might be having an affair. So she looks into it, she investigates it, and the more she looks into it, the more she starts finding out about her husband, about his life, about his second life, maybe. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying. But she, she starts to figure out stuff, and it snowballs, and it snowballs, and it's another one of them shows where it's twist after twist, you know, drama after drama. I really enjoyed it. I think we binged all three series in like, I don't know, it was like a week or something stupid. Um, because it's all there, it's all on, and I think each series is very, very short, so you can get through them quite quickly. Those are the shows that I would recommend to you right now. I probably will do a follow-up video on this as well, because there's, there's, there's loads, there's loads. You've, you've seen Netflix, there's tons of stuff. And this is just Netflix, by the way. We've watched some stuff on Amazon Prime. Apple TV has got some really good shows. We're watching one at the moment as well on BBC iPlayer, so there's a lot of platforms. This is just Netflix, but hopefully that gives you a few things to keep you busy, during lockdown 3.0, 4.0, and whatever else is to come ahead. We don't know how many more lockdowns there'll be. Hopefully there won't be any more, but a few tips for you anyway. Hopefully that's useful. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you've made it all the way to the end, by the way, well done, because this was a long video, but you made it. So thank you so much for watching this far. Please do subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already. I would really appreciate that. Um, and I'll see you again for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.